Hello my friends, Jacob's here one more time and so are all of you. I'm so happy to see all your beautiful faces. Thank you for pressing the play button. We have so much to talk about. Big updates. Updates on Damar Hamlin, the guy who collapsed on the field. We're going to talk about some of that. Stuff going on with the Pelosi. We're going to talk about some updates, a mysterious door and everything else. We're going to explain these things to you so that you don't feel like you're being left out of the loop. Because some people, well, they, uh, they maybe don't have the info. Jacob's got the info. And why wouldn't I have the info? There's so much stuff going on. We got 90 seconds left, everybody. Doomsday clock, 90 seconds, right? Everybody's freaking out. And why wouldn't they? Every, every, if you're on any kind of social media, that all you see, if, if you're in my niche world at least, maybe you're not, maybe you're seeing kittens and doggies and cute stuff, but in my niche world, I'm seeing things blowing up, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing that, so I gotta do a lot of praying. I gotta, I gotta remind myself to put my eye to the prize, understanding that no weapon formed against me is gonna prosper. But there's a lot of weird stuff going on, a lot of weird stuff. I get a lot of weird stuff sent to me via DMs and emails and everything else. Really cool thing that just kind of came down from the Twitterverse from Dave. Dave says, look, we're in a cycle. There's going to be a great reset. There's going to be like a, a screen save, like a screen saver. Every uh, couple of, uh, I don't know, a couple of hundred years or so or thousands of years or so, they reset everything. So he sent me this stuff and I said, I'm going to share it because everybody needs to know. That, that, that every once in a while, they just kind of wipe everything out and start fresh. But we're just reliving everything. And what's his, he has some proof. He has some proof. And he shared all these pictures, like paintings from like the 1600s or the 1800s. Old paintings like that one right there. Looks like, like they're holding a cell phone. What's, what's that lady doing holding a cell phone in a painting that was done long before the cell phones were out? Or what's this guy doing with a cell phone in that? Maybe it's not a cell phone, but you know, Dave thought it was a cell phone. A lot of people say, say it's a cell phone. You've seen all those interesting videos. Maybe time travel's a thing, or maybe we're just redoing the same thing over and over and over again. I'm not too concerned about it, all right? I don't think I'm gonna be doing this again. I hope you're not either. I think I'm moving on. I think I'm moving on to, to the greener pastures. I hope you are too. If you put your faith in God and you love people and you live your life right and you do the right thing and you listen to that still small voice within you, you know, the God-given intuition that is all people have, you'll, you'll be okay. You ever hear of these things called the mud floods? Tartaria? Is that, is that the name of it? Everybody for years has been asking me, talk about the mud floods, talk about the mud floods. It's interesting stuff. One of my buddies on Twitter said, hey, change of pace for you, check it out. And I looked into it. But it kind of was funny because it was at the same time that Dave sent me the the uh, the idea that everything was going to be wiped. Somebody believes that this is all a computer simulation and then the, every once in a while it just gets wiped clean. You tell me. I don't know. I think that sometimes we can think really weird stuff, and if we don't, uh, if we're not careful, we uh, we could get a we could become crazy. You know, I'm not saying that it's not true. Because theoretically, it could be true. What do we know, right? Simulation theory is a thing. But if you don't know anything about Tartaria, the uh, the golden civilization, it was a very advanced. It was, I guess, founded in 1856. And then I guess there was like, it was covered with mud. And that's why you see buildings that like have like windows halfway in the earth. That's some of their evidence. There were maps that were released. I think Putin released some maps. I don't know. I didn't do a ton of research on it, but I did find it interesting. You could check out that YouTuber on, uh, uh, on the bottom of the uh, the video there, and um, yeah, check it out. See, uh, see, see, learn more about the mud floods and the great reset that's coming. I think people can get. I think we can get a little bit too. Uh, I think we could get a little too in the weeds with things. You know, if you start thinking. I mean, there's so many, there's so many ideas out there. There's so many theories out there that it, 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 it takes away the joy of life because you're always worried, right? So like right now, we got a couple of things going on. I posted something on Twitter. If you're not following me on Twitter, Twitter, uh, follow me on Twitter. I just canceled my Twitter blue subscription. 
I uh, because of the profile picture and I thought hey I'll cancel the subscription so I'll be able to change my profile picture but I didn't like the profile picture that I had it turns out it's still under review I can't even change my profile picture I don't know I think I was in a better I was better shape before I was paying but now I'm not paying anymore I'm sure they're gonna work the bug out I enjoy Twitter you can follow me on Twitter if you want but really you should be subscribed to my website jacobisrael.com scroll down to the email subscription area that way I can um, always be in touch with you because the way things are with the internet today it's uh I don't think a lot of people want you to have faith I think that, I don't think a lot of people that, that are in charge really want you to have faith in more it seems like anything that's really related to love and truth and compassion seems to kind of be put down on the uh the back burner kind of like hindered which is seems to be happening with my youtube channel it's it goes through these spurts i do the best i can you know but if it's not for you well i'm not going to grow at all so i'm grateful when you take the time to hit the like button grateful when you share the video around when you tell people about the channel you know me i don't got the answers i say come by the well but if you leave the well you're going to thirst again you got to go to god you got to pray you got to ask for more but it seems like there's so many wild theories out there about a lot of stuff i mean about like everything right I talked about Damar Hamlin. It's weird. Number three, right? I, I did shows on this. This show talked about how weird it was that everybody was kneeling, but Neil, number 33, I said it, it seemed like it was some kind of, I don't know, some kind of a symbolic thing that was going on. But what did I know? I talked about the hard hands on this show over here. So it's not like I'm one of those guys that's like, no, this is this is all natural. I mean, maybe it was. Maybe it was just all that stuff was coincidental. I say God reveals stuff, right? So whether it's planned or not, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. We just try to understand the spiritual story, which I believe that I shared. But right now, a lot of people are saying that the Mars a clone. And uh, Stu Peters, you know who he is? He's got, he's like, become, he's huge. He's huge. He did a, like a big documentary, which like millions and millions of people have watched and um about why everybody's just like you know passing away and there's some weird stuff going on but like you know the damar stuff he's been tweeting out stuff about you know he's like oh maybe it's there's two damars they're faking it it's not really him you know even though he's come back and his family has said that it's him and he's you know he showed up at the game and everybody was like well, what's the deal why is he not showing his face so he did an interview and then they're like that's not him that's a clone and people are like zooming in on the ear they're saying, look, the ear is not the same. This picture right here, Stu Peters is like, come on, this is the two DeMars. And I'm like, maybe it's just a different camera angle, you know? Like, if I'm standing straight on like this, my ear is like this. It's, it seems longer. But if I tilt my head back a little bit and then you take a picture from that angle, it looks smaller. That's a video right there that talks about perception, you know? It's, I mean, it's, that's like a silly thing. And then it just starts to get a little goofy when people are talking about these little things. Like, why why would it matter, like, if he passed away or not? They, if they want to cover up something, they could cover it up with a story. But, like, I think saying he's been replaced with a perfectly identical clone, I, I, I don't know. I think that that's, that's probably Fonzie jumping the shark. You know? I think that that's, that's what that is. And, and I tweeted out, I said, look... You know, when you do stuff like this, you start, when you start to sound a little bit too out there, a little bit too into the weeds, and I'm not saying maybe he is a clone. I don't know. I don't got the inside scoop, but I'm not going to uh, just go on that based on a couple of pictures. Just like I'm not going to go on the fact that this, we're on a big computer simulation and everything's going to be wiped clean because there's a couple of paintings and it looks like people are holding on to cell phones. Although, I will say I've experienced the Mandela effect, so there's something going on. But if that's not enough, then I saw another tweet out about his elbow, and like one elbow looks bigger than the other, and I'm going, well, you know, if you're if you're like this, and then you're like this, your arms, your arm could look smaller and bigger, depending. It's just I think people get a little bit too hung up in things. Like, what's going on with Pelosi, right? Not that Pelosi. But you know, uh her husband. They, they released all of this footage where you see this guy, the Paps his name, this guy, this weird guy. You know, he just called into a TV station and he made this like really bizarre threat type of thing. I'm sorry, let everybody down. You know, well, we can come after people. Horrible stuff. 
And of course, what's the news going to say? The news is going to say that his actions are based on people who believe in wild, nutty theories. So when people are saying things like, hey, it's a clone and he's got a smaller ear, you know, and I'm not saying that that's not the case, but I'm saying it's like these are the people that are reaching like millions of people. Then you got little old me. It's like it's hard to it's hard to reach just, I don't know, 30,000 of you, which I'm not I'm not complaining. Because, I mean, my goodness, I love every single one of you. Just wish YouTube would, would like, alert more people to the show. Because so many people probably don't, they, they say to me, Oh, I thought you stopped. And then I found out I was unsubscribed. It's like I get sick of hearing it. Feels like you're fighting against the tide. But, like, the thing with this guy, you know, they released the footage. He, like, <laughs> broke in. First of all, it's just very strange. The whole thing's very strange. But you know what's going around? Everybody's talking about, like, who opened the door. That's the thing. Who opened the door? Was it Nancy? Was Nancy there opening the door? As if that this was like, this is, this is what people are talking about. It just seems like a little, little, uh, little weird to me because I'm thinking maybe they open the door and step back. So I figured, you know what I would do because I'm the kind of guy I want to, you know, I want to, I don't want you all to be worried about who opened the door. So what I did, I did a reenactment. You ready? Take a look. Who opened the door, huh? Who well, I was wearing shorts, by the way. That's so this is what happened on the other side. It's that easy. Look on the other side of the door, and that's so I opened the door, step back. That's not the thing that people should be questioning. Who opened the door? People should be questioning like other things. This is now going to be a thing that they're going to use this to then, like, discredit anything else. So, this is why when I see these people sharing these, I don't know, I, I don't want to say just ridiculous claims, because it's not totally ridiculous. I just did a whole show on cloning, you know? I, I just did a whole show on cloning, so it's ironic that everybody's talking like tomorrow's a clone now. So it's not, like, too weird, but I, th I think that, you know... I, th I think that it it it, uh, it takes away from the uh, credibility of people that are really trying to open people's eyes to the fact that maybe there is more to the story than we're being told. I think at this point, look, Trump said it best. He said fake news, right? I told everybody that if he's saying it's fake news, it's going to get to a point where you're going to understand that the news is fake. There's going to be, there have to be, like today everybody has a camera. So how do you keep the truth at bay? By flooding the world with so many different lies, right? From what seems like credible sources too, like these people seem like they're on our side. You don't know who to trust. You don't know who to believe. And anybody could come on here and say anybody's full of baloney. But I will say, you know, um, Peter's, you know, he did, he did a lot of videos where there was like, there was like a water creature. Right? You know what I'm talking about. It was interesting because I I did these sh shows about the Kraken. Remember everybody was talking about release the Kraken, the Kraken, the Kraken. The Kraken. Kraken's a water judgment. It's like a water creature. And uh, it was a judgment on man. And ironically, at the same time, I was doing these videos about Jacob's time of trouble. And I said, December 14th, um, I believe Jacob's time of trouble will begin. So in between these two shows, part one and part two, you had my video on releasing the Kraken, which means to release Satan in the world. I've been talking a lot about, like, you know, octopus, and it's very strange, right? So, when there was that, that, um, that meme going around about the executive who worked over, and now he's Pfizer'd, like, uh, fired, <laughs> this over here, you see the Kraken. And, because there was right above, right in that picture, right there. It's just, it's just like there's an octopus right up there. And that's what's going around. It's just very strange. Not to mention, in the background of another shot, there was Mary with the baby Jesus. All the things we talk about just happen to show up. It's very interesting. So, I don't want to like, you know, I don't want to say this, that, and the other thing. I just think that, you know, the ear thing, Stu, I think that it's just, I think it's just a different angle. You know? And the elbow thing, I think it's probably just shadow and probably his arms just flexed. But the release into the crack, that was all about Trump. You know, Trump 
who, by the way, there's a picture going around of Trump. He's got the, uh, he's got, he had 47 on his, um, on his shirt. Like he's going to be the 40, he's going to be the next president. We know this, right? That's what, well, I mean, we don't know for a fact. We don't know that for a fact. Some people are thinking it could be Elon Musk because he met with McCarthy, right? And there was that picture of Abraham Lincoln in the background. That's interesting, right? Wouldn't that be interesting? Oh, what if they were on the ticket together? That would be interesting too. I did say a long time ago that I thought that it would be Tulsi and Trump. I don't know why. But then I saw like a Trump account and they were tweeting out, would Tulsi be the best vice president? A lot of people think she is. Who knows? But he had that number 47 on him. And uh, he also had on the collar MAGA, which we know in Latin means witchcraft from Magi, Simon Magus, fake news. There's so much of it. But we can pray and we can hope that whoever comes into being and whoever comes into power is going to make a difference in a good way. I mean, it is a possibility, right? We have a tendency of thinking the worse. God could be riding the ship. That's what could be happening right now. You know what's out? You know what's out? Um, Defeat the Elite sent this to me. I pet goat five. It's out. Oh yeah, it's out. I want to do a decode of it. But in it, it seems like there is a change. You know, at one point you see, uh, you see like all of the heads, all the people that we know, and they look like, they look like pharaohs and they're all on their knees and they're all handcuffed. It's kind of like a changing of the guard. Is that going to happen? I don't know. I do know God in the end makes everything right. He will bring another kingdom in. He brought Babylon in to deal with when a kingdom became very corrupt, God had no problem bringing Nebuchadnezzar in, right? Jeremiah's day, what ended up happening? You do the wrong thing, you don't follow the... God will bring correction. And I believe God is bringing correction. Novak, he won the uh, he won that 10th Australian Open, right? Making this now his 22nd Grand Slam title. Someone asked me what the 22 was. The 22 that was on his shirt and it had all the uh, Lacoste alligators making the, the 22. And I said, oh, it was his 22nd Grand Slam. But big news about him, right? Because, of course, he did not want to do the wackadoo. He didn't do it and they really made things hard for him. So he takes a year off, he comes back and he kicks butt. Right? There's actually a pretty, a pretty funny meme going around where, you know, Gates is watching. <laughs> He's watching. You would think that he would be, you know, he wouldn't even be alive because of the uh, winter of severe death and disease that was supposed to happen that never happened. Numbers on jackets and stuff got people freaked. Hey, even um, Elon. Elon, uh, he had a, the number 22 and it said James on top. I don't know. I don't know what that meant. He was wearing a jacket some YouTuber or something or an influencer who wanted to get a hug from Elon. And uh, he ended up getting a hug from Elon. I, I don't remember who sent this to me, but somebody sent it to me and they're like, check out his eye. And I was like, oh, and I zoomed in on Elon's eye and it looked like, looked like a slit, like he had like a snake eye or something. Once again, probably just the light. I remember a while ago and I'm no alien. All right, I'm not connected to any organization or anything else. I'm barely getting by, just doing the best that I can. You're the reason why I'm still doing this. Once, once you all take off, that's it. I'm gonna go back to selling mattresses. Simpler days. I sort of remember somebody zooming in on my eye and saying, look, and I looked at it and it kind of looked like a little slit too. <laughs> so, I mean, we're not gonna say that the guy's from another planet. We'll just leave that to him because he says that all the time. But the fact that it said James on it, it's James 22. I thought, okay, let me just look up James uh, chapter 1, verse 22. And I got to tell you, it's actually a real, it's really good advice. The book of James is in the New Testament. Okay, James um, is the English name for Jacob. It really should be called Jacob because it was the brother of Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, take note. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. That's great advice. That's advice that I don't know how to keep a lot of times, right? Before I tell everybody DeMar's replaced with a clone because I see a picture that makes it look like they have two different ears, I should be slow <laughs> to jump on that. I should maybe do a little more research, maybe question if this is not something where Occam's razor would be 
you know, whatever is the most reasonable answer would be. That is probably from a different angle. Shouldn't be getting upset, right? Just because my profile picture didn't change. I shouldn't be blaming anybody saying, oh, they're, they're, they're you're trying to hurt me. I'll just be like, hey, until you fix it, I'm not going to pay the $11. It's that easy. You got to be, I got to be better. We all got to be better. This is great advice. Human anger doesn't produce righteousness. You know, so like instead of flipping out when you hear something or you think something, sometimes those thoughts in our heads, they're not the truth anyway. The devil's a liar. So that's the loud voice in your head telling you to think the worst. But if you resist those thoughts and you say, hey, maybe that's not what they meant. Or, or maybe, maybe I'm taking this the wrong way. If we're slow to anger and we give it a chance to allow God to reveal the truth of something, life will be a lot better. Rid yourself of moral filth and evil that's so prevalent today. Humbly accept the word that is being planted in you, which can save you. Go to God, love, forgive, be compassionate. Listen, just listen to it. Let that seed sink in. Don't merely listen to the words and deceive yourself, right? Don't just listen and be like, I'm not going to really pay attention. Let it sink in. You know, don't just listen and then do whatever you want. Do what it says. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and forgets who he is. There's more to us than we know. There's more to us than we've been told. We need to return to righteousness, right thinking, peace, power, truth. We need to stop dwelling in the nonsense and the lies and the fear and the imagination. We need to stop blaming other people for our problems. We need to understand that every good gift is from God. We need to remember who we are in Christ. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues on it, like whoever continues to look towards God, who continues to look to do the right thing, who continues to look for the, the silver lining in the uh, scary gray clouds, that will be freedom. It'll give you freedom. And you, if you continue in it, not forgetting what you've heard, but doing it, don't forget what I'm telling you here. Do what I'm telling you here. Be quick to forgive. Be quick to be compassionate and charitable. Be quick to not think the worst, but to ponder upon it, maybe pray about it, and seek God for a better answer. Those who consider themselves righteous, but don't keep a tight rein on their tongue, they deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, look after the orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself from being polluted. And all that means is take care of other people. You know, orphans meaning they don't have a spiritual father anymore. It's not just about, you know, how many, I don't know how many orphans are out there in the world. It's not just going about and helping them, but you should help them. It's about those who've lost their connection to God, who've lost their connection to the Father. Take care of them. Be patient with them. Love them, forgive them, be kind. And I promise you, when you do these things, life gets better. All right. I love you all. I hope you enjoyed the show. Do me a favor. Will you please hit the like button for me? Leave a comment if you haven't. Share the channel around. Tell me what you think of the video. Make sure and subscribe to jacobisrael.com email subscription so that I can notify you and we never lose connection here. And have the best day ever. If you want a copy of The Calling um, or you want to get any kind of merch, you can get the Uranus is a Planet mug, which is a nice starter in the morning. You can do that by just going into the description below. You don't have to do any of that, by the way, because I continue to share freely. Thank you to my patrons. I may be doing like a, a Q&A over there. My wife and everybody says, you know what, these people, they, they should do something special. So I'm thinking of doing maybe like a dream interpretation over there or something. I don't know. Um, if you're on Patreon, do me a favor. Tell me. I, I put a post up today. Tell me what you think, and uh, we'll figure something out. Thank you for those who help out on PayPal. Everything you do, I thank you and God bless all of you and have the best day ever. Bye-bye. September 10th. Mars hangs closer to the earth 
than it has in 6,000 years. Like the light that led men from the east to a child in a manger, it could well be a sign of good things to come. Thomas James shall be his name. The world will change because of him. In the small town of Bethel, in a time not unlike our own, a child with a great purpose is born. Years later, alienated by his peers and abused, Thomas suffers a devastating loss. When it appears he has nothing left to live for in the world, this is when his true calling begins. While trying to escape the sinister powers that be, a terrifying vision haunts him. Miraculous events seem to follow the peculiar young man as he struggles to come to terms with what he was born to do. The stage is set. The time is at hand. The truth will rise and a revolution will begin. The startling revelation of who Thomas James is, truly, will change the lives of those around him and set off a chain of events long ago foretold. There is more to this novel than one might think. Inside these pages hides a treasure just waiting to be discovered. So if you've ever wondered if there's more to life, or why it is we suffer, then this story will not only captivate you, it may just open your eyes to a truth that could set you free. Find out what is in us all that makes us heed the calling. Thank you.